Hey, it's Sol with another video. Sponsors, I think, are going to be like somewhere over there. Give them a lot of love and thanks and etc. Uh, BlizzCon 2019 is only one month away. So it's about time to share some of the most popular predictions before the lights dim, the screens flash, the crowd goes crazy, and then authentic Diablo gameplay at your fingertips. Skull f***ing disappointment. Ooh, I can't wait. So I'm gonna go over predictions, big and small, mostly big, and then I'm gonna give it a rating of one through five. One being, nah, this, this definitely ain't gonna happen. All the way up to five, as in, I'm like willing to bet small amounts of money that yeah, this is actually going to happen. So check back in a month from now after BlizzCon, we're gonna revisit this whole list, and then we'll see just how wrong I am. Haha! -ha. Of course, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, etc. Uh, for more of this and all things Warcraft, and let's get started. First, there will be an expansion announcement for WoW. Okay, okay, that's that one's way too obvious. I mean, <laughs> duh! I'm starting off easy. I'm just warming up. Okay, obviously there's going to be, uh, I'm, I'm incredibly confident that there's going to be an expansion announcement today. Let's just move on. Will there be a mobile announcement regarding the World of Warcraft? And I'm going to give this one a four. I'm going to give this one a four. I think it's I think it's super likely that they're going to announce it. But I know that there are a lot of people that think to themselves, no, they shouldn't announce it. Because when they announced Diablo Immortal, it won over so poorly. But we got to understand the context behind the Diablo Immortal announcements as opposed to a mobile WoW title, which is probably going to be related to like pet battles or something like that. So like, like last year, uh, in the weeks leading up to BlizzCon, Blizzard themselves had to come out and say, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, what we're going to announce at, for Diablo, it might not be what you think, guys. So they were trying to push, push it back or walk it back, try to lower the hype. But even then, the fandom was like, Diablo 4, Diablo 4, Diablo 4. They were like super stoked, super excited. Oh my God, this is it. There's going to be like a f***ing Diablo movie, a TV show, and Diablo 4. It's going to be like this huge announcement. And then instead, you know, we got what we got. So it was it was this crushing disappointment in part of Diablo fans that were hoping for this. They got something else instead. In this case, though, we have a lot of premise to ride on i suppose we we already figured that uh wow expansion announcement is is coming we already kind of figured that you know based on everything that we've been hearing about mobile games and what they've been working on that's something like this is going to come so i think this is just a likely thing to happen and i think it's going to go over much better than diablo immortal did because in this case we know that this is going to supplement other wow content the Shadowlands leak is actually true. No, probably not. I'm going to give that one a one. So I I actually do think that uh, Shadowlands, you know, that we actually, let me combine this with another one. Uh, uh, one of these other ones here. Shadowlands, in the next expansion, we're going to go to the Shadowlands. And I'm going to give that one a four. So I do believe that... In some way, shape, or form, we're going to visit the Shadowlands, or, or we're going to really come close to that in the next expansion. But as for simply the leak that we've seen, or the so-called leak that we've seen, no, I don't think that that's actually going to happen. And, and I did a whole video on why I believe that that so-called leak isn't really a leak, how that's almost impossible, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but as for just going there, yeah, it's absolutely feasible. The, all signs point to us somehow, some way, either going there or the Shadowlands come to us, which I'm going to get into a little bit later. So I definitely see something like that happening. Is there going to be a world revamp? Like, is, is, is it going to be a cataclysm level change? I'm going to give this one a two. I don't think... That, this, that there's going to be a big world revamp. I think there's still kind of like a sort of hesitation in part of Blizzard after Cataclysm. It's like, okay, do we really want to like do like this whole big change, at least at that level? I don't think so. I can see, I can see zones changing slightly 
um, because of a new expansion. Uh, it, it would be the it would be the difference between Cataclysm, which was a huge change, and Legion, where there were certain parts of the world that were slightly altered to uh, to update things like. Uh, the catacombs in Karazhan, if, I, if I'm recalling this correctly, those were slightly changed so they can suit some of the class quests. So there might be changes at that level. Uh, things might be added, or there might be small things that are phased in, but I don't think that there's going to be a big old world rewrite where the whole world is brought back up to date and then you gotta talk to, and, and, and in this case you will talk to an NPC and then it'll totally revert back to the pre- Shadowlands world or, or whatever it is that it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be at that level. I think that's a bit too much. I don't see them tearing it, tearing the whole thing down. Yeah, I, I think if there are going to be bigger changes, bigger zone changes, it would be um, in Darkshore or in um, Sirius Fall Glades. Maybe, you know, uh, targeted places, but not just not a world revamp. I think that's a bit much. Is there going to be a level squish? This one gets a four. Uh, a lot of the reason for that is because of the previous information that we've learned, uh, uh, exit surveys that we've seen from Blizzard that in, that basically said, "Hey, there's going to be a level squish. What do you think about that?" And that that all but confirms that yes, this is going to happen. I'm just going to give this one a four because I have my own doubts as to whether or not a level squish is going to work because a level squish is just one component of like a big class design revamp this is just that's just one small thing and um if, if they are going through with it i guess a level squish could be part of it personally i just don't see that it's all that necessary is there going to be a dance studio yeah it's another throwaway so no <laughs> i'm gonna give this one a one we're still not gonna get a dance studio as cool as that would be but i mean i guess along those lines more character customization i would love to see more than that uh, more of that, but I'm going to give that a one as well. <laughs> Sorry. Is Blizzard going to talk about the future of Classic WoW? I'm going to give this one a big old fat one. Sorry to the Classic fans. I don't think that, I think it's way too soon to talk about um, BC Realms or BC servers or Classic Plus, which I don't buy into anyway, but I don't, I don't see Blizzard really talking about that stuff yet because we're not even at phase two yet. We still got a long way to go. And, and after that, Blizzard is going to have to figure out by the time they get to like phase five or so, okay, here are our population numbers. Here are the people that left or stopped playing and here's why. And from there, listen to the conversations there. How many people are thinking to themselves, well, shucks, you know, I played, I, I, you know, I played through Classic for this long, but I'd come back if there was, I'd come back for BC. You know, or I never, I never bothered with playing classic because I want to play BC or I want more classic content stuff or no way you can't have class. You can't have classic plus it will defile my actual experience. I'm going to go back to private servers and that sort of thing. I, I think Blizzard is listening to some of that stuff. If anything, they're going to talk about, Hey, we hear you. We're listening. We want, you know, but we have nothing to announce at this time because it's too soon. We want people to enjoy the full classic experience. We want to see the, um, we want to see the communities mature and establish themselves and build and build themselves up. There's that whole uh, dual tournament that's going to happen um, starting next month or so. Yeah, after BlizzCon, it's going to really start getting into gear. So we're still seeing how the classic community is developing. It's just too soon to talk about these sorts of controversial, th controversial things that could possibly cause rifts or splits within the community. Is there going to be a big ass class revamp? I literally wrote that big ass class revamp five. I'm super, super confident that something like this is going to happen because that's really vague. That encompasses a whole bunch of different things. So I do believe that that this is going to happen. Level, you know, and this goes along with the lines with the level switch, which I also think is going to uh, happen. If I were to give a measurement as to how I would define a big ass class revamp, I would say if they gut the talent system, that's big. That's definitely big. Um, anything less than that? I would say it, it, it wouldn't be as big. So I would so I'd say like BFA not very big. Legion I would even say is not very big. When it came to um, 
transitions to uh, Wild Cataclysm, Miss Pandaria, those were big. Those were those were absolutely um, <laughs> those were catastrophic changes that totally changed how we viewed uh, class development in the World of Warcraft. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of the centerpiece of it. That's how I would qual qualify what constitutes a big ass class revamp. Get the talent system, give us something, uh, give us something cooler. Whether it's a return to talent trees or um, expanding on talent rows instead. Blizzard also talked about pruning. How they talked about there was too much pruning that uh, to be done, and how in focusing on class identity or spec identity, they separated things a little bit too far. So I want to, so it's, it's hard to really get into details here. I'm not going to, but that kind of level of change. Yeah, those would be like really big changes and, and I'd be all for that. So big ass class revamp five. Is there going to be a new class? Pfft. I'm giving this one a four actually. So I'm, I'm super confident, you know, we're, we're more than likely going to get a new expansion, but are we going to get a new class? Are we going to continue following the tradition of getting a new class every other expansion? Or are we going to see Blizzard buck the tradition in lieu of something else? And I've talked about this multiple times where I thought to myself, well, you know, maybe they won't introduce a new class because they're going to put all their focus and energy on redoing the classes. A big ass uh, class revamp as opposed to, hey, let's muck things up even more add another class into the mix that does uh, tanking and healing and deep, you know, another hybrid thing uh, to mess with the meta even more and to, and to spread um, and, and to spread the player influence uh, even wider. That's cool. You know, people love getting new things. Don't get me wrong. People love seeing a new class. They want to play with it. They like seeing uh, new ideas and, and other such things. But is it necessary in, in this case? You know, at what point are we going to just run out of ideas or good ideas? I also floated the idea of instead of adding a class, add maybe one or two specs to certain classes that we feel like, hey, it would be a good idea to have a Dark Ranger spec for a hunter. And it might be, I mean, like, imagine this. Imagine you make a hunter, it level it gets to a certain level and then for some reason you unlock the ability to get a dark ranger spec it it, it, it sounds terrible it, 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 i don't i'm not providing any context at all but imagine if over time you can unlock a spec for your class like so having a level one dark ranger doesn't sound very reasonable but having a level one through 110 hunter sounds cool and then some sort of class quest happens and then you unlock a dark ranger spec how would people take that no idea <laughs> but i think that would be an interesting take as opposed to forcing another class uh, into the mix that might not really contribute much or it might not address some of the bigger problems that we're facing with regards to class design and wow is there going to be player housing probably not <sighs> this one gets a two so i want this one to happen which is why i don't want to give it a one i want to i want to give you folks some hope player housing and and wow it's a controversial topic because when you think player housing people think doll houses people think garrisons and and they think to themselves other thoughts that would make them that, that would make them decide no no don't make it happen blizz it, it's a terrible thing i don't want to just hang out and decorate my house i want to go out and kill shit. but at the same time there's a large swath of people who are out there collecting transmog collecting pets doing achievements otherwise doing not killing stuff things Player housing represents a possible end game for collectors that would uh, that could provide. I would or I would make the small arguments. It would argue, it would provide almost endless gameplay because you might be farming for materials to build things or make blueprints. And I've done multiple videos on how player housing could possibly work while still sticking to the overall gameplay of WoW, the overall spirit of WoW, how that can be preserved, but you can still have a place to come home to. 
I'm gonna go as far as throwing up footage right behind me of of Final Fantasy 14, where they have a way of housing where you instance yourself into what's called, I think it's called a neighborhood, where you can see entire lots of homes, walk inside, you know, you could check out the outside, and then just click a button and then you go into an instance diversion of this house you just kind of check things out so you can check out other people's houses on your lot it's actually pretty cool um i i still don't know exactly how all that stuff works but i'm pretty confident that if blizzard really wanted to they can invest the time and resources into developing another end game layer for their game and i think this would be one way to go about it but they get to two because i think I, I just think people are too traumatized to deal with the possibility of housing, but I'm crossing my fingers. I hope I'm wrong about this. Will the next expansion bring about the a big change in factions, whether it is the end of the Horde and Alliance's factions, or if there's going to be a third playable faction? This one gets a two. And... and, and opposite of player housing i'm i'm giving it a two because i'm like Ugh, i don't want it to happen but i'm dreading it it can happen theoretically given the current state of azeroth's political climate for those who really pay attention to that things are like really jacked up right now the horde has been shattered their leadership hasn't organized themselves yet but of course we're moving at the speed of patches i doubt that we're going to see kind of a progressive thing uh, where we see, hey, week week over week, we're going to see horde elections or something like that. That would be kind of ludicrous. But uh, I, have, I have doubts that we're going to see something like that. But are we going to see uh, something big? Like, if, for example, Kalia Menethil um, recruiting a bunch of Forsaken to her cause and, and recruiting others to her cause. And all of a sudden, yay, we're the third faction. Or if Sylvanas Windrunner were to make her return and she's like, ah, oh, I have a whole bunch of undead people now and now we're this undead playable third faction. I doubt it. I think that would be way too jarring. And it, this mostly comes from a gameplay and population standpoint. Splitting, play, splitting the players into three factions would be, in my opinion, like hugely damaging. Like, how would you split this up? Would that third faction start from level one? Would people really want to put up with leveling, uh, with leveling on a faction that we know very confidently would be severely underpopulated compared to the other faction? And then, of course, there's things to consider like war mode, uh, PvP, and instances. How would the queues be like, and so on and so forth? Is Blizzard going to continue with their current formula of allied races? Uh, and this one I don't have a great opinion on. I'm going to give this one a three. Uh, because they could go either way. The allied race formula, in my opinion, is flawed. I, I, the whole idea of leveling up, going through, um, getting exalted, so that way you can do a quest and then make another character from 20, like that's, I think that's a bit extreme. I think we can dial that back a little bit. On the opposite end, just giving a race for free as well, that's totally acceptable. I think that's fine. And part of me thinks to myself, well, if there are two ways to go about things, one provides one has friction and the other one does not, and in the end the result is the same, why not just take the way that doesn't have friction? So that you know, in a way I do support the idea of, you know, fuck it, let's just uh, let's just set uh, set up a uh, a race and just give it to people for free. I think if nothing else, Blizzard can just loosen the restrictions a little bit. Um, or at least not make us, definitely don't make us wait too long. I, I get it when Blizzard said that they could have had the allied races come out a little bit sooner, as in uh, Kul Tiran and Zandalari, but like some last minute changes prevented that from happening. I, I can accept that, um, because it sounds reasonable when Ian finally explained it. I don't think I, I, I don't think the fans would, would appreciate, or I, let me just speak for myself here. I don't think doing that again would be acceptable. Release them sooner. Um, and I guess loosen the restrictions a little bit. I don't think it necessarily has to be get exalted, you know, get, um, I think it was, was it exalted or revered? I think it was exalted. Um, no need to get too exalted. I think just completing the quest line for that particular race is enough. 
which means getting to revered, I think is okay. So like if it's a brand new race that we've that we've never really like dealt with before, cool. I'm cool with with hey, let's get people to revered, do the quest line, and and then you're done. Um, doesn't need to have that many barriers, and especially doesn't need to have like a really long ass wait. Sylvanas Windrunner will not make it to the end of the next expansion. I'm gonna give that one a five. I don't believe that. I think Sylvanas is gonna be like a mid boss. She's. I, I think that um, at some point she's gonna she's gonna leave the story of the expansion like midway through. I don't know if she's gonna be a raid boss. I don't know if she's gonna be like the Ghoul Dan of the next expansion although that wouldn't sound uh that wouldn't sound very unreasonable either but i have a feeling that if she is going to meet her end it's going to be um not at our hands not not at the hands of the champions of azeroth there's going to be some sort of scene or event that happens that's going to take her out of the picture whether she's killed by the Lich King, or swallowed by Nazoth, or she goes full Kerrigan and she turns into this weird entity and just kind of floats away into whatever because she somehow saved us all. Uh, but I don't believe that her end is going to be on our hands. That's gonna be, that's gonna be my call on it. I'm sure that people are gonna be pretty disappointed about that. Especially Alliance players that are like, no, I want to like impale her in the chest. Actually, I think Horde players are going to, uh, a lot of Horde players are going to feel that way too. No, I want to freaking kill her, please. Is Pathfinder going to be the same thing that it was in previous expansions? I'm actually going to give this one a three. Um, it, it, I, it should be a five, to be honest, because Blizzard has been pretty satisfied with how flying works. But at the same time, I think that there's still so much room for improvement, not to make it, you know, more time gated or, or whatever, but I think it can just be a better experience overall. Because right now, the Pathfinder achievement is just a Pathfinder achievement. And, and, and that's it. You get, the, you get the achievement and then all of a sudden you can fly. There's no context, there's no quest, there's no narrative, there's no immersion about obtaining flight. And, and I've campaigned about this for a long as time. I would love for it to just be part of the game instead of being just a prize at the very end. It makes it kind of sad because it doesn't give flying a whole lot of meaning. I would love for flying to unlock additional content that otherwise we wouldn't have access to. Think of of BC and Lich King and Kata and Mop, where there was content that you can only access through flying, but the hurdles to get to flight, it's not so bad. There are, there's been the popular thought, and I agree with this, where if you complete a zone achievement, if you complete everything there and maybe I guess get exalted with the faction that happens to be there, I think that would be an acceptable grind. Once you get all that stuff done, you unlock a quest where you're just allowed to fly in that zone. You get a license per zone. I think that works. Whether it's a license or whether it's like the fell cannons that are otherwise preventing us from flying, well, they've been destroyed. Thanks a lot, champion bro. Broette. You can fly now. That sounds reasonable doesn't it uh so i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it a three just because well I, I doubt it's gonna happen but i i really want there to be some sort of revamp will the displaced races find a home and when i'm talking about displaced races i'm talking about the night owls i'm talking about the forsaken and i'm talking about the worgen i'm gonna give this one a four i think that some of the races are going to find a home uh, I think that, I mean, Gilneas is such a tempting target, especially with the war over. Um, there is the possibility of cleaning up Gilneas and repopulating it. Repopulating uh, Lordaeron, not so much. I think that's still too freshly blighted for it to uh, for it to be fully cleaned out uh, just a few months later. Uh, there's also Arathi to consider. Um, as well as maybe Menethil Harbor over in the wetlands. So there are places where certain races can go as to as for the forsaken though not so much i can't really see much of uh, i can't really see them finding their own permanent settlement to call home uh, i i think that politically they're going to be struggling for a while they're they're going to need to re-identify their themselves in a world without sylvanas windrunner to guide them 
Because if you think about it, she's sort of, she was their queen slash cult leader. You know, she led them and guided their information and, and, and everything. You know, she was their everything. So to not have her anymore, I think that's I think that's doing a lot of damage to them uh, morally. Uh, so I think they're going to be I think they're going to struggle. Uh, but as for the Nettles and the and the Worgen, I think yeah, I'm gonna get yeah. I think I gave that one a four. I'm gonna stand by that. Uh, I I think that they're more than likely going to find a place to settle. Are we going to get a legitimate surprise for the World of Warcraft? For, you know, for WoW's next expansion, and I'm talking about some feature, some sort of hey, check this out that pretty much no one's talked about. So I'm not talking about player housing as much as I want that. Not talking about player housing or some other often talked about feature, but just like a thing that we otherwise would never have wanted. But when we hear about it, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Because Blizzard's tried that. Don't get me wrong. They've tried that and, and they failed. Oh, by the way, I'm going to give this one a two. Because not only do they need to surprise us, it needs to be something that we're like genuinely excited about. Uh, going back to what I was saying though, Blizzard tried to do this in Battle for Azeroth by introducing uh, new, con new content layer systems in Warfronts and in Island Expeditions. Unfortunately, in hindsight, they just didn't work out for all sorts of reasons and you folks at home and elsewhere can bring up those reasons yourselves. Um, speaking for myself, they just weren't things that really delivered, um, especially island, island expeditions, they just didn't deliver on an experience that I felt compelled to run. Warfronts were a little bit different. They did a decent or a reasonable job of forwarding the story a little bit, of providing context to this escalating conflict between the Horde and Alliance. Islands, though, were they just felt like a side thing. I was like, hey, let's do islands and stuff, because that's how we get Azerite. And I would think to myself, no, it's not. I could do all sorts of things to get Azerite way faster and not have to be uh, tied to a group to do it. Um, but can we be surprised? Yeah, I, th I think Blizzard does like trying to move, trying to uh, push forward with new systems that they hope are cool. But sometimes it just doesn't work out. It would be nice if Blizzard did go and just literally lift it. You know, I, they've done this uh, other times, but I think it is totally fine if Blizzard were to just lift a system like player housing or something like that and just plop it into WoW and just make it their own. When they lifted the idea of player housing and what they ended up dropping was garrisons, that didn't seem to have a great translation, not in my head. There's, uh, you know, I, I think that some things just ain't broke. So why try to uh, change it so much and slap your name on it? I don't think it's necessary all the time. Will BFA's expansion features survive to the next expansion? And by that, I'm talking about Island Expeditions uh, and Warfronts. Uh, I'm going to give this one a two. No, I don't think they're going to survive it. If nothing else, they're going to be... Um, heavily heavily revamped or maimed <laughs> into being something that is, is like totally unrecognizable like i would love to see the i would love to see the warfront and island ai be applied to places like battlegrounds or single player scenarios or certain outdoor content or solo content that would kind of spice things up but as for the formats that we've seen not so much and like i said earlier i'm a bigger fan of warfronts than island expeditions but even then warfronts didn't quite deliver um it didn't quite deliver the experience that uh, players were hoping for um heroic warfronts were a vast improvement over the original format which was just kind of a phase roll uh in this case heroic warfronts it provided uh, it it compelled us to talk and communicate and be like oh no we're, you know these guys are coming and we would actually go in and help each other out we were actually trying to power up our uh, soldiers to make them strong enough to do stuff we coordinate a little bit and that's something to appreciate I don't think something like that is going to go forward though uh, and and if it does it's going to be a very um, a very pared down experience or it's going to be folded into other upcoming features is blizzard going to continue with an infinite progression system like artifact power that we've been experiencing in legion and bfa i'm going to give this one a three 
I think it's going to happen, but it's going to be different. I, I, I feel like psychologically, a system like Artifact Power, it messes with people's heads. And when I mean it messes with people's heads, it tends to mess with the heads of people who love to really speak out against this sort of thing. For someone like me, AP doesn't matter. It's just a thing that I happen to get. It's something that I just sort of forget about. And for all I, you know, I could care less if AP were to just be an under the hood system where I'll just suddenly my weapon gets, or my weapon or my knack or whatever gets a little bit stronger uh, as the weeks and months go by. Uh, but, from a, but from people who are looking at it mathematically, who look at the charts and kind of try to map out how long it's going to take them or how uh, how much grinding they're gonna have to do in order to get these things and then from there try to try to seek out the best way to farm that stuff and then complain that this is the kind of world that Blizzard has put before them I can understand that critique too so I think it's gonna change somehow some way I, I just don't know what I, 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 it's it's not very fair for me to talk about it like this. I just think that there will be a change. I'm just not quite sure what it is because I'm personally fine with the way that things are. Is Blizzard going to bring back the idea of class sets? Um, I guess I'm going to give this one a four because class sets are like two separate things. One class sets are like set bonuses, things that celebrate your class. Um, and to a certain extent, I think that those can come back. But I really don't like them at the same time. Blizzard made a pretty good case, in my opinion, on how set bonuses tend to lock slots. It's the whole it's the whole phenomenon of, hey, I want to put on these two slots, I want to equip this gear, but I can't complete a set, or I'm going to break a set, so I'm not going to swap that out. And in the meantime, you're not even going to wear that piece when that piece could go to someone else, and that's kind of messed up. That's something that I'm kind of iffy about. The idea of bringing back um, cosmetics, uh, class set armor pieces and all that, I'm more confident about. I think that those are going to come back because the backlash from the community has been pretty loud and clear. We want these things back. I think that it was a cool experiment for Blizzard to have to try and give us class, uh, try to give us armor sets that are based on the zone or the ray that they come from. But I think the experiment's over. I think it's time to go back to uh, to the days of yore when we had like umpteen paladin sets and in my personal opinion i'm i am personally tired of seeing multiple class uh, multiple sets for the same class or multiple visions of what the paladin class could look like based on this demon raid thing that's something i'm a little bit tired of I, i've always been the type that's well, I have terrible taste anyway, but I've always been the type that just kind of mixes and matches armor anyway. Is Titan Forging going to return in the next expansion? It gets a four from me. Um, I really don't want it to return, um, but it's not a five either because I think that Blizzard is experimenting with things that would make them, that, that would try to persuade them. You know what? Maybe we don't need to do Titan Forging anymore. I did a video not too long ago where I made a case to kind of um, squish item level bloat uh, because item level bloat is one big reason why Titan Forging exists in the first place. It's so that players can have like some sort of soft path. It's not really a path. It's just luck in order to uh, obtain a high uh, in order to obtain high item level pieces. But if there is some sort of item level squish of sorts, uh, and, and the gap between, like, let's say, raid difficulties is lessened, then the need for Titan Forging, or even War Forging, would be not needed, because they would be so much more powerful than they normally would be. For those of you who are familiar with the Benthic system, that's something that has been fairly popular. Uh, despite some of the misgivings, I think that the system itself could be improved, like not worrying about tertiary bonuses, or just, or just not having sockets on those things at all. Um, and because that, and because Benthic Gear was a zone-specific um, kind of progression system, it didn't really translate well outside of Najatar or the Eternal Palace raid. Having some sort of upgrade system that works all over the place, uh, that that uses you know more uh, malleable currencies like gold or 
uh, honor or something like that. I think overall that would work out much better over the span of an expansion and not just a patch. Is personal loot going to continue on in the next expansion? I, I'm going to give this one a two. Um, yeah, a big solid two. I think that for the most part, you know, there's a, there's a uh, there's a point for personal loot, and I think Blizzard did it right when they did it during Legion, and, that, and how they forced pickup groups or pugs to have personal loot on by default because these people don't know each other. There's the there's a tendency for people to possibly ninja, and there's that level of distrust that happens among members. In a guild, though, not so much. The idea of personal, of forced personal loot within a guild setting has been, in my, at least in my observation, it's been pretty unpopular. Um, there are some people that I that I read about who are in support of it because they don't have to deal with the drama that comes from it. But when it comes to other situations, for example, like with my guild, when we are running with alts, we would want to gear some of these alts because hey, a really good piece of gear dropped. But it just happens to not meet that whole item level threshold thingamajigger. And so Guildmate A couldn't give anything to Guildmate B. And that really sucks because Guildmate B could really use that piece. Uh, so at least the way that forced personal loot is in guilds right now, I think that really needs to change or otherwise go away. But if there are if there are at least some adjustments based on feedback, I that would be cool too, I guess. Is the next WoW expansion going to come out next fall? <laughs> this gets a five. It's I'm pretty I'm pretty damn confident about this one. WoW has been coming out like by you can you can time it these days. You know when it comes to ooh let's speculate. I think we're I think Blizzard is pretty close to just having a general formula of hey we're gonna bring out an expansion in the fall. We're going to announce it around BlizzCon. The beta is going to come out a, co uh, a couple months later or so. And barring anything catastrophic, this is what we can expect. And I, I appreciate that. Uh, it's nice having things at like a relative schedule. So I don't see any reason why the timeline would have a really big shift at this point. And the last prediction, which doesn't really have too much to do with BlizzCon, but uh, is 8.3 going to launch in early 20? 20. Uh, I'm going to give this one a 4. So you might have learned recently that, hey, the 8.3 PTR is is almost coming. We've seen indicators that it's going to come pretty darn soon. Uh, and this was reported by Wowhead, among some other outlets. Uh, and this is earlier than I thought. I was thinking that it was going to be at least a couple more weeks until we would at least see hints of 8.3. But there are things that we need to consider as well. 8.2.5 was very heavily encrypted. Now, granted, it was very light on the content, but most everything was encrypted. I think that the idea of encrypting a bunch of this content, you know, a bunch of the spoiler content at least, turned out to turn out very well for Blizzard and for fans. We all got to share in this moment of excitement and rage over what happens uh, at the end of the BFA war campaign. So right now it's early October and we're already getting a hint that a PTR build is going to drop in the next couple days or probably next week. But what's going to be on it? And what's going to be encrypted, what's going to not be encrypted? If Blizzard is going the route that they took in 825 and they're going to try to hide a bunch of the story elements, like I said, that's a good thing. And that allows Blizzard to uh, show us more just stuff. Maybe they'll show us armor and weapons that come from the new raid, uh, maybe a few specific models that aren't giving too much away. But we gotta, but we gotta consider a, a while back during the Battle for Azeroth, um, during the beta and the alpha, we got a lot of information out of that. We pretty much got a good chunk of the story as to what was going to happen. We've got, we got leaked cutscenes, or not leaked cutscenes, we got data mined cutscenes and all sorts of stuff that, in my opinion, really shouldn't have happened. It really gave away a bit too much of that story. We also have BlizzCon coming up too. Now, historically, we have got, we've seen situations, I'm trying to, I'm, I think off the top of my head, it was the. Uh, it was from Lich King to Cataclysm. Like, we got to learn about Cataclysm before we got all of the uh, Lich King content uh, done and over with.
but the patch, uh, but I believe the patch was like pretty much out at that point. Um, and even then, we weren't working with such a, co you know, with such a so-called cohesive storyline or one that otherwise kept flowing from point to point to point. Here, things are happening so quickly that it really would be jarring if we were to get a spoiler as to where we we're going to go. So that's going to be it for the list. I think I was pretty long-winded about that, so I'm gonna, I, I appreciate you making it to the end. So don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed yourself, and subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. Check back in a month or so to see just how wrong we were about some of these predictions, and I hope you guys had a good time. But yeah, I'll see you for the next thing. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Thank you.